tired right now. <laughs> I thought you guys would like be in the same room or something. I mean, I can come up there if you want, but this no, way you can get separate fine. audio tracks. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, it's like the Beatles. You're going through your creative differences. All right, never mind. We try um, and avoid each other as much as possible. <laughs> yeah. Hi, this is John Mark Walker. This is the Manage IQ podcast, and I want to give a hearty welcome here to Jared Cottrell and Normal Meta. How how are you guys doing? Doing great. Thanks for having Doing us. Doing great. Did I pronounce your name correctly, yeah. Jared? Because I, I can never tell if it's Cottrell or Cottrell or whatever. It, 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 yeah, it just depends on the time of day. But yeah, Cottrell's fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. How do you pronounce it? <laughs> Put it that way. Cottrell. Cottrell okay, yeah. that's what I thought. That's what I thought. All right. All right. Cool. Unless I want to be like really intimidating, then I say it Cottrell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, well, now I know. Now I know the uh, the secret. So if you ever say that to me, I'll uh, I'll figure it out. Uh, cool. Well, I'm I'm glad to have you guys. Uh, we've got we've got a lot of exciting stuff happening, uh, especially with regard to work that you're doing, uh, uh, with regard to uh, your cloud broker. Why don't you? Well, first of all, why don't you tell me what y'all do and uh, uh, you know and what you're doing with Manage IQ. Sure. So my name, again, Jared Cottrell. Um, I lead uh, Booz Allen's cloud management and brokering practice here in our strategic innovations group. And, you know, what we're doing with Manage IQ is really key, right? It's, it's um, we've got this open source initiative here at the firm in the SIG. Um, we have, a there's a lot of push out in the market with our clients, open source first, cloud first. Um, it's all just really starting to come together and, and manage IQ seems to be that center of gravity. And, uh, you know, what we've done is we've built um, some enhancements to manage IQ to apply it for a broker brokering application. And, and that's really what we're going to be talking about um, at the summit. Normal. Cool. Sure. I'm a normal. Oh, I'm normal. Matho, um, a lead senior lead technologist at, at Booz Allen. Um, kind of the brains behind the original cloud engine that we created and that we're open sourcing um, uh, with with the Manage IQ community. And we're um, really seeing that the adoption of open source technologies is growing within our client base. And this is our way to kind of level the playing field and introduce um, enterprise ready, you know, brokering, um, cloud brokering solutions for enterprise customers in an open source manner. So it's a pretty exciting time for us. You, you, you mentioned a lot there about enterprise customers and open source. What, what is the enterprise view of open source in these days? I, I remember when I first started in this business, you know, 15 years ago, uh, enterprise customers went like this uh, to, uh, you know, the word open source. I'm, I'm curious, what's, what's happening now? Um, I, I still think there's... Um, there's some resistance to open source, especially since there's a lot of places that have very large um, vendor contracts and kind of ecosystems. But um, slowly but surely, um, with the adoption of cloud services and public cloud services, a lot of folks are getting more used to SaaS and um, other software business models. And one of those business models is leveraging open source based um, software plus uh, getting enterprise support on top of that. And so um, we're seeing a lot of not only our clients starting to adopt uh, open source technologies, but also we see a lot of vendors um, starting to consume open source technologies and provide support just like Red Hat does on top of uh, whatever they whatever software packages they've created. So I think that business model has been validated by Red Hat and some other companies over the years and it's it's a very popular business model for startups it's a lot of it's a popular business model for the medium software you know businesses so um i think it's just going to get more and more especially as as those kind of technologies become more mature and innovative and kind of level the playing field against um their closed source competitors Great. So no, let you, me add a little bit yeah, to that. Yeah, go ahead, Jared. John Mark, if you don't mind. Um, so, you know, I think more more ho holistically, 
it, it just makes sense for cloud. So, you know, we could have the proprietary versus open source discussion all day, but what we're finding is and we're getting a lot, a very positive response that, um, you know, a community-based and open approach, especially for cloud applications, just makes sense. Um, right. You know, proprietary right. software cannot respond quick enough to the user demand. It cannot respond quick enough to all the change in services from providers like Amazon, for example. Um, right. It's expensive, right. right? Why would we have to pay for the environment and, you know, for the whole stack, right? Having an open stack just, right. just really starts to make sense. So that's just a couple of op options, um, observations that we found, and we're, you know, especially in the f federal space with the the release from the the CIO of GSA, for example, saying, "Hey, look, you know, open source, much like we have a cloud first policy, we're going to look mm -hmm. at open source first too." Um, so again, very positive response out in the market. So it sounds like what, with the advent with of the digital, oh, I'm sorry, with the digital sorry. what? Go ahead. No, no, no. With the digital with the what? With the digital services team. Yeah, the yeah. digital services team that was stood up in the White House, um, led by Mikey uh, from Google. Um, you know, they just released back in August the Tech FAR, um, which allow, which is a reading of the FAR regulations that I'll, and how to apply open source and and more innovative technologies on top of that. And so, yeah, I mean that's a pretty big thing. I, I can only imagine, you know, ten years ago having something a document like that. Right. And, and, you know, host it on GitHub. <laughs> right. And yeah, yeah imagine. <laughs> that's like an unimaginable kind of thing. And, and that just happened, right? And that's, I think that's that shows exactly where open source stands. So it sounds like cloud computing is kind of the inflection point that really drove the expectations for open source software. It sounds like people, uh, customers expect their cloud platforms to be open source or to work with open source at the very least. At a minimum. Absolutely. Um, another thing right. is the the secure, yeah, the security tooling around that. Um, you know, it shows how quickly this this past week with the um, the bash um, vulnerabilities, it shows how quickly the community responds to that and how, you know, it was big news because open source is such a core foundation of basically our everyday lives. Um, yep. That's why that was big news. So. So um, besides like the maybe the last couple of feet within a residence or a home, like everything else that someone connects to is probably going to be running on open source technology. So absolutely. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. And speaking yeah. of speaking of security, you know, I just want to point out that, uh, you know, we, we have uh, the capabilities with the Manage IQ uh, policy engine to uh, to find out and avoid uh, which uh, VMs are vulnerable to things like shell shock, the bash vulnerability, and uh, previously with the uh, the Heartbleed uh, issue, uh, that you can uh, you can now sort of avoid the vulnerabilities entirely if you uh, if you have a strong policy engine like we have. Um, why did why did Booz Allen decide that they wanted to do a cloud broker in the first place? What was it that said you know what we need to do this? So a couple things, um, you know, if we go back a couple years. It, we, we started to see a trend more towards adopting cloud and there's a lot of options out there. Um, I think it's a lot like how the travel in, the travel industry um, matured a lot, how real estate has matured. Um, you're starting to find that a lot of our clients, a lot of users out there need a middleman to come in and um, you know really help them make the right decisions. And technology is a big part of that, a platform, right? So. Manage IQ yep. is a big piece of that platform. Um, but the actual like trigger for us to move forward and actually build this solution on top of Manage IQ came from client interest and market demand. So we, we started to see a lot of um, marketing materials from Gartner and, and the likes around, hey, we've, there's this huge opportunity out there, you know, 200 billion or trillion or, you know, all, all the different numbers that were thrown out. Um, we started to see a lot of RFPs from and, and RFIs from our clients. So we were responding to right. those. So what we did was, you know, what typical Booz Allen, we built a framework that was modular that anybody could take and build a solution. Um, we did analysis of alternatives. And what we found was there's three options, large ISVs, IBMs, BMC, CAs, VMware. Right. Um, there was a lot of niche players out there, Gravitant, Estrato, a lot of really small startups. They've got a few people on hand. Um, yeah. 
their platforms are, are good at a couple things, not good at, at most other things. And then the third would be open source, and there really was not a solution. Manage IQ is great. Um, it was really the only cloud management open source solution out there. However, it didn't have that extended UI, the the, the ability to scale, and, and some of the more you know broker-like functions that we thought were needed. Um, so the solution we built was really around that, just responding to um, the market and the demand from our clients. So it's really all about customer demand, pulling, Absolutely. saying, hey, Absolutely. we need this. What kind of broker features specifically were you, were you looking to implement? You know, the, I think the main one was just more from a user's perspective, because that's really what brokering is. So an enhanced UI, right. more like an Orbitz-like experience. You know, the, the current front end is great for like admins, right? Just like going into like vSphere, or like the Amazon console, yep. right? You don't want Absolutely. Your typical users to go into that, but also a more project-based, workflow-based approach. So, um, you know, bringing that up more to the user, that was really the core there. And then the second piece was just, you know, scaling beyond infrastructure and putting mechanisms in place to, you know, expand APIs and connectivity. I think, again, front end and very much the back end, a, a typical right. brokering type function, right? Cool, so Orbit's for the cloud. Yeah, sure, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yep. and, and and what are you going to call this thing again? Uh, I think there was some uh, so, so it's there was not some official. discussion. <laughs> what? Okay. No, All right. It's not official, but you know we're we're looking at uh, at, at jellyfish for for the name and um. <laughs> there's a long version and jellyfish. a short version right. for for how we came up with that name, but you know sea creatures <laughs> are are pretty cool product names it's just sea creatures are there. cool that, that, that's really all awesome to say yeah say. sure <laughs> well well now that we're now that we're putting this on the on the web and making it public i mean it, it'll be hard to walk back from jellyfish so we're kind of you know kind of making it happen right, right as we speak sure <laughs> uh so, uh, oh, so, so designs come design summit is coming up uh, actually it's next week can you believe it it's next week sure. uh, october 7th yeah. and 8th in Mawa, new jersey yeah. Uh, yeah. I can imagine you guys are going to be uh, talking about this a bit. What what are you going to, what exactly are you going to be doing uh, at the design summit? So I think uh, so, and I'll, I'll kick it off, Normal. You can close out. So I mm -hmm. think we have. I think we're uh, we're going to be participating throughout both days, right? We've got a whole team of engineers, and and Normal yep. can dive deeper yep. into that, participating in all sessions. But I think we have the mic for for two sessions. Um, one will be, hey, this is what we've built today. This is what uh, this will be uh -huh. more strategic. This is where we want to take it. And uh, you're, time out, time out. Yeah, we we'll repeat you. that because you're you're cutting out, so you need to repeat that, please. Okay, from the beginning. Sorry. Yeah. Sure. sure. Yes. So we'll be attending, um, you know, both days of the conference. We have a whole team of engineers attending that will participate and interact throughout all the different sessions. But I do believe we have the mic for two sessions. The first one is going to be around what we have today, right? What we've built, what we're going to contribute to the community. And the second piece will be where we're taking it, a little more strategic. Here's our roadmap. Here's what we want to do as core to manage IQ. And Nermal will also be attending. He's, again, you know, the brains behind a lot of this, so he'll be very active. And your thoughts, Normal, from some of the more technical perspective? Yeah, yeah, yeah. from a technical perspective, um... What what we're really looking forward to is um, having you know that face to face with the um, Manage IQ community developers um, from Red Hat and from the other um, uh, participation uh, participants from the community, um, getting together um, and kind of getting an understanding of what the where Manage IQ is going in the future, and and then also presenting what what contributions are are. Uh, organization are, are putting toward the code um, things that we can help with over the over the roadmap and and uh, officiating over some of those design discussions as as uh, manage IQ gets kicked off uh, next week so that's, that's, that's what yeah. we're looking forward to yeah, yeah. no uh, we're, I'm looking forward to that as well the 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 degree to which you guys have really just jumped in with both feet is uh, really impressive it's been uh, great to work with you I've, I've really been uh, pleased to see uh, the enthusiasm from your side for you know what we're doing, and it's really right in line with where we want to go with with the Manage IQ community. So it's been uh, it's been a real pleasure uh, to have you guys participating. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing 
the reaction to when you're releasing the cloud broker. Uh, when do when do you perchance uh, think that you'll have like the code available? So we'll have um, some code available next week for a select group of folks, but the actual um, formal announcement will be the, the third week of October. Fantastic. That's uh, that's going to be a really big deal. Uh, we're going to. Yeah. We're gonna jump on that and uh, you know show that to the world, and uh, we'll see we'll see what everyone says. Yeah, yep, again, we're looking know, forward to it. Yep. All right. Uh, so once again, you can find uh, uh, Nermal and Jared and a few other smart people from Booz Allen and other companies. We're gonna be uh, at the Design Summit, the Manage IQ Design Summit, October seventh and eighth in Malwa, New Jersey. Uh, there's still time to register. If you go to manageiq.org, you'll see a link where you can register today. And uh, thanks, Jared and uh, Nermal, for coming by. It's been a real pleasure speaking to you. Thanks, so Mark. Thank you. Hey, no worries. Take care. All right, Bye. take care, guys. Bye. And